So, scientists did a study, they found strange things, let's talk about it. In 2022, researchers from the University of Chicago conducted what is probably the most comprehensive study on the Mandela effect to date. They wanted to understand how widespread the effect is and to explore potential causes, which is something I think we're all curious about. Now, in 2025, this might seem like old news, but I think a lot of us in the Mandela Effect community weren't aware this study existed, or maybe we read summaries or headlines, but not the full paper. And there are some intriguing insights buried in the details. So in this video, I'm gonna share the top five findings from the study that really caught my attention, and you can decide whether you think they help clear things up or really add to the mystery. If you're new to the Mandela Effect, check out my previous video, which provides an introduction and also a deep dive into the most perplexing case. Otherwise, let's go. A quick background into the study in question. This paper was published in 2022 by the BrainBridge Lab at the University of Chicago, which focuses on the relationship between perception and memory. It's worth mentioning that the researchers in this study approached the Mandela Effect primarily from a psychological perspective, viewing it as a memory phenomenon. Now, there's obviously a lot of debate about what the Mandela effect might really be, what might really cause it, but it's probably easier to investigate this line of thinking than alternative timelines. So fair enough. Another important aspect of this study is that it focused on visual Mandela effects. So things like logos and characters and not other things like movie quotes or historical events. That said, let's look at the findings. So the first thing that jumps out from this study is that the Mandela effect consistently affects certain items, certain logos and characters, but not others. And this sounds really straightforward, but I think it's key to understanding what might be going on here and why. In experiment one out of the four in the study, participants were shown images of seven popular icons commonly affected by the Mandela effect. Each icon was presented with three versions, a correct version, the Mandela effect version, and another manipulated version. Unsurprisingly, a significantly higher percentage of participants identified the Mandela Effect version as the correct one. Participants were also shown a control group of 34 icons that haven't been linked to the Mandela Effect. And for these, there was a significantly higher rate of accurate identifications. Or in other words, people weren't misremembering them so much. And this is actually a really important finding because it hints to there being more than unreliable memory at play. If this were the case, we'd expect to see similar rates of misremembering across the board, but we don't. So why are certain icons more susceptible to the Mandela effect? Is there a inherent quality that elicits memory errors? There's more on that to come, but it's definitely a key part of the puzzle. So probably the key takeaway from this study, as described by the researchers themselves, is that there is remarkable consistency in the false memories that people have. It's not just that people are remembering things wrong, they're remembering them wrong in the same way. This was seen in experiment one when participants repeatedly identified the same incorrect versions of the icons. And very simply, this proves the existence of the Mandela effect in controlled settings, in the sense of it being a consistent collective false memory phenomenon. But why do so many people misremember the same details? It's this consistency that makes the Mandela effect so perplexing. It's easy to dismiss the phenomenon as just a product of unreliable memory, I think we can all agree that memory isn't foolproof. But that doesn't explain why we have the same false memories. Why do so many people misremember a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo and not a different selection of wrong items, baskets, plates, other things that we might expect to see? Participants in the study were also asked to rank their familiarity with the icons and the number of times they'd seen them before. Oddly enough, there was no significant difference in prior exposure between correctly remembered icons and apparent Mandela effects. So it's not the case that they simply haven't seen them a lot. So what explanations might there be? Quick pause to say, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons to join us for future investigations. In looking at why so-called memory errors might occur, many point to schema theory. This is the idea that we organize and interpret information using mental frameworks or schemas sets of beliefs and knowledge about a topic. So in other words, we form expectations based on prior experiences and our general understanding of the world. In relation to the Mandela effect, it could explain why we might misremember certain characters. For instance, we expect monkeys to have tails, so we picture Curious George with one. The archetypal image of a wealthy gentleman often includes a monocle, so that's how we remember the Monopoly man. And you know what, this definitely does make sense some of the time, but the researchers argue it fails to fully explain the phenomenon. 
take the fruit of the loom cornucopia, for example, this isn't a commonplace item, nor does it have any association with the brand name or the product. So schema theory doesn't really seem to apply. The researchers also point out that if the Mandela effect was caused by schema-related errors, we'd expect to see a broader range of affected images. So back to the question, why are some things affected, but not others? In experiment two, the researchers looked more closely at the seven icons that seemed to induce the Mandela effect, seeking to understand why this occurred. They looked at the influence of attention and perceptual processing and of prior exposure to the icon. Participants first viewed a blurred brief snapshot of the correct icon, meant to capture the gist-like view we typically hold in our minds. They could then explore an obscured image of the icon in more detail, but they could only reveal parts of the image at a time with their mouse. After this, they were asked to select the correct version, choosing between the correct icon and the Mandela Effect version. Surprisingly, even after seeing the correct version, many still picked the Mandela Effect manipulation. When asked to justify their choice, around 65% of these participants cited the manipulated feature, like the cornucopia. And this is actually really strange, because it suggests that Mandela memories must be really deeply rooted. They seem to resist correction from accurate prompts, even immediately before memory is tested. Researchers also analyzed the mouse tracking data, meant to mimic eye tracking, revealing no notable differences in attention between images that induced false memories and those that didn't. So poor attention isn't to blame either. And lastly, experiment three looked at whether the accumulated viewing experience of an icon over time could affect false memory. So for example, do we misremember C-3PO's leg because we rarely see it on screen or because the Mandela Effect version is more commonly seen in media? To do this, the researchers scraped Google images of the seven Mandela affected icons. For C-3PO, over half of the images didn't showcase his legs at all, and about 25% featured the Mandela Effect version of him with the two gold legs. Search results for other icons like Wells Waldo and Volkswagen also contained a notable amount of Mandela Effect versions, though the correct version still made up the majority. For the other icons, however, the image results showed the correct version the majority of the time. For Pikachu, Fruit of the Loom, The Monopoly Man, and Curious George, the researchers found that people will rarely, if ever, encounter the visual Mandela Effect version in the real world. The researchers also noted that in some cases, the Mandela Effect version is encountered in the context of the Mandela Effect, posts about the Mandela Effect, for example, implying that false memory precedes visual misrepresentation. So this reveals a perplexing dynamic. The Mandela Effect persists, even despite ample exposure to the correct versions, and minimal exposure to the wrong ones. In trying to understand why that might be, the researchers suggested that maybe there is something more memorable about the Mandela Effect versions, so much so that it overrides memory of the correct counterpart. This line of thinking might explain my favourite example, Fruit of the Loom, with its eye-catching cornucopia. There is now a mock-up widely shared online with a cornucopia, but that's only been around since 2017, and it doesn't explain why people were remembering a cornucopia before the age of the internet, decades ago. So what can we take away from the study? First of all, I want to say actually I thought this was a great study in terms of its methodology and approach. Um, normally scientists can be quite dismissive of things like this, things that are associated with conspiracy theories, but actually I thought it was very open-minded. And it was also nice to see science acknowledge when conventional theories can't explain something. And with the limited research that we have on the Mandela effect, I thought the study shed valuable light. My main takeaway is that we seemingly can't explain the mechanisms behind the Mandela effect, even when investigated by experts in memory and perception. Common theories like schema theory or prior exposure don't seem to fully explain how the Mandela effect happens. And maybe it's the case that different Mandela effects have different causes, but there still seems to be a bit of a knowledge gap. And my inner molder delights in the mystery. So full disclosure, I'm not entirely convinced that the Mandela effect is purely a product of faulty memory. I make no claims as to what the alternative might be. I just remain unconvinced. There are definitely some Mandela effects that I think can be more easily explained. Things like song lyrics and some logos where we don't generally pay that much attention. But others seem to defy logic. The fruit of the loom gets me because of my own memories, but also the anchor memories that other people have, the strange residue, and it just not being a commonplace item. If there are any researchers out there listening, these are the questions I would really love to see explored. One, why do some items frequently elicit the Mandela effect, but others don't? Why do we misremember a Volkswagen, but not Toyota? Two, 
how do we account for people having the same false memories, especially when schema theory doesn't seem to apply? And third, how do we make sense of anchor memories, the very specific memories that people have surrounding a Mandela effect? This is something I haven't seen addressed in any academic conversation other than the general capsule that memory is unreliable and people are suggestible. But what do you think? Do you have any theories or questions of your own? Let me know in the comments. As a closing thought, the interpretation of the Mandela effect as purely a product of unreliable memory still has to account for the fact that human memory is very reliable. The human race wouldn't be where it is today were it not for solid memory. We all do hundreds of things every day based on memory, very successfully. So is this really just about memory? This is my favourite rabbit hole, guys. It's so weird and I love it. If you're with me, if you've enjoyed this journey, drop me a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.